أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صلينا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنا تحمد مجي اللهم بارك محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنا تحمد مجي my dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, I have a special guest tonight on my podcast. A fellow convert brother who has joined the Ark of Noah, of the Noah of this age. This, this my friends, is my good friend and brother in faith, Brother Dario Jimenez. Assalamu alaikum. His, he has converted from a spiritualist background, and which is more of the common name of spiritual but not religious. And he has accepted the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, two years ago, who was prophesied by both Hadrat Jesus, alayhi salam, and the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa So like my humble self, as I've already introduced myself also as a convert uh, with Brother Amadi Answers. He, this brother right here, likes to read the books of the Prophet Messiah, alayhi salam. And he feels a special connection with them. He also enjoys MTA and watching videos of Brother Amadi Answers. And he enjoys life. He's also a loving father, a loving husband, and a good friend. So, so Brother Dario, uh, you know, tell us, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more of your background and uh, tell us, uh, you know, your experiences with reading the books of the Promise of Sia, Oh, my name is Dario Jimenez, and uh, my background will be more spiritual. I never really was a religious person. I grew up Catholic, kind of Christian, Pentecostal. My, I, was, um, I was born in Los Angeles. And moved to Nina, Wisconsin, when I was like three or four years old. And growing up, I really wasn't like a religious person. I was kind of more like spiritual. I would like, I would like, like um, believe in like Mother Nature, and I wasn't really into like the church. I I did go to the Pentecostal church when I was like thirteen with my aunt and uncle, and I did get baptized. I was a, a devoted Christian for a little while. But I wasn't really like religious. I wasn't really into it. Mm -hmm. And growing up, uh, I was more like a musician. I would play guitar. I would hang out with my friends. I skateboard. I would love to skateboard. And I never, uh, actually, I, I, I did think about God, but not in a way where like I think God is like a man. I would think God was like. All of us, or everything was God. I, I didn't. Well, I was just confused about what God was. So I would just uh, pick the simplest thing that I would think everybody, everything is God's fault. Mm -hmm. And the way I got into Islam, I, I was kind of like a rebel growing up too. So I was kind of in and out of jail. And one one night, I was in jail and I was having anxiety attacks, like real bad anxiety attacks. And then um, I don't know where I saw someone. A, a jailmate reading the Quran, and I asked him, like, what is that? He's like, it's the Quran. He's like, you can ask for one. Ask the the CEO. So I I asked the CEO, and I started reading the the Quran, and I it immediately I felt peaceful. I was really peaceful. I wasn't having anxiety attacks, and I would just read. I would stay in my cell just reading, 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 reading. And at that time, I was about to get out. It was like maybe like a month. When I got out, and at that time, everybody knows, like in jail, that like, you will get a lot of anxiety. Like, what am I gonna do when I get out? Am I gonna find a job, or am I gonna be the same person? Am I gonna commit the same crimes again? So like that. And luckily, when I got out of jail, I start. I kept on reading the Quran. I started asking around if um around um my area if there was any like a mosque, a temple I can go to. And right away, I saw the Ashkash Ahmadiyyan. 
and I sent the email, and right away, uh, brother Ahmed by um, he sent me an email right away, and he told me, "Do you want to go for coffee?" And we went to him um, Starbucks, and we started. At, I started asking him questions, and he started. He he, re, he responded like with with a good answers, and from there on, we started having like a friendship. We started talking to each other, going for coffee. I started going to the mosque. He, he taught me how to pray. Uh, I met Brother Damon, mashallah, pretty good brother, really good brother. He always kept me motivated, always kept, it was like a brotherhood that I never really had. You know, like the other, like my other friends, they will right away invite me to like have a drink or or do some drugs, but I, I would never have a brother tell me, come here, let's go to the mosque, let's pray, let's talk about God. And then from there on, I knew Ahmadiyya was like the truth because you just feel it once you go inside the mosque and you pray and you hear the azan, you, you just feel peaceful. It's at home. And lucky November November 2nd, 2017 or 2018, 2018, I, think. 2018 I took my bite and in front of the Khalifa, I was blessed. And it was it was a beautiful experience. It was really beautiful, and mm-hmm. I felt I felt at home. Like like I don't know how like to say it, but I felt at peace with myself. And from then on, I just kept on going. Started reading, started reading the books of the Promised Messiah. Uh, blessings be upon him. Peace and blessings. Peace, 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 peace be peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. And right away the. The book that really got me into it, that got me hooked, was uh, the philosophy of the Islam. The philosophy of the teachings of Islam. Mm-hmm. You know, that one right away, from like even reading like the first sentence in, in, where he talks about the states, the three states, it really does click to you. It just really makes sense. Like when we're out there in the world, we're not really ourselves. We're not really like our like our spiritual selves. We're out there like animals. Not thinking about the consequences. We're just out there just living. Mm-hmm. And then that would really kind of click. That's when I was like, wow. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that, that's kind of a, a similar experience uh, with me. Uh, uh, there, was, there was a reference, and I, and I mentioned this in my video with uh, Brother Amadi Answers as well, that. Uh, I remember reading a reference in the philosophy of the teachings of this song that's uh, the closest thing, I'm paraphrasing, the closest thing that we can get to uh, the echo and feeling it is like uh, when you dream, like you have different sensations, you have, uh, you know, just different feelings. Sometimes when you wake up, uh, you still feel that certain sensation because that's, mm-hmm. that's just, you know, and then there are certain symbols in dreams and then it might like pro- prophecy like certain events. Uh, I remember uh, a month after converting, uh, I had a dream that I got a letter from Hazul, and his signature in the dream was in red ink. And uh, as I as I uh, told in my story with Ahmed, the answers uh, that red ink represented to me that uh, that Hazul is all us divinely appointed Khalifa on this earth. And you know, I, it was very blessed. It really shocked me. I mean, I narrated the dream a few days before the actual letter arrived to Brother Ahmed and a, and a couple other brothers. And uh, then, you know, a few days later, uh, the actual letter arrived. Unfortunately, the letter wasn't really in, not unfortunately, but rather like, you know, weirdly enough to me, like at the time that uh, the letter was not in in red ink, but rather is in uh, black ink, because right. because I took the dream literally. literally the yeah. But I mean, and yes, it was literal in a sense, but only with the exception of the red ink. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's very explicit, and and yeah, I the philosophy of the teachings of Islam hooked me. The book. Life of Muhammad Sallallahu by Hazrat Khalifa Masih the Second, Allahu Anhu. That also helped to hook me. I remember reading from that book uh, 
Am I reading a reference where uh, I think it was uh, during the Battle of Hudaybiyah, if I'm not mistaken? I remember uh, there was a there was an enemy soldier who maliciously tried to attack the Holy Prophet Sallallahu I think he was young and uh, he tried to charge at the Holy Prophet Sallallahu But the Holy Prophet Sallallahu seemed good in him, uh, said, uh, come over here or something, or like, come to the faith. And he said it very gently, like a loving father would to his father, to his child. And uh, and then, uh, and then you know, the charisma of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu the that divinely filled charisma of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Got, got to that uh, enemy soldier, then he all of a sudden right away fell in love with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and then turned against his army and started helping out the Holy Prophet Sallallahu And I remember reading recently in Barahini Amadiyya Part 5, I posted this I posted this on Twitter, guys, so you guys know what I'm talking about, with the exception of those who are not on Twitter. Uh, it's... When somebody is close with Allah and he has the signs of Allah with him, there's a charisma that's attached to him. Mm-hmm. You and I have seen this with Azur, the other Khalifa Tomasi the fifth, may Allah be his helper. And we know for a fact that as we as I have seen in my dream and as we both have seen in real life, he's he's definitely a man of God. And, uh, you know, since I'm now talking about uh, Burihini Amadiyya, you know, I know uh, you're reading uh, parts one and two. Part one and part two, yeah. Tell, tell me what you've learned. Tell us what you've learned from it. And, you know, what's, you know, I remember reading from uh, this book a few years ago. That's, I, I've learned a lot of uh, good arguments from it. That uh, Islam is a true faith. That, uh you have to have the signs of Allah with a faith in order for it to be true. You cannot rely just on tales of the past, superstition. Just yeah, just tell us, brother. Oh, uh, right now I just got done reading the uh, the first part actually, and I really love how it was talking about the the oneness of God. Like Allah does not need a partner just to make all this creation, and I really loved how how like expressive he was talking about Allah, and it made me feel like. Wow, like all this that he created, just him, you know what I mean? It's just Allah. And it, it really made me think like, like Ahmadiyya is the truth, you know? MashaAllah. I still have to read the second part. It's going to get intense. I know. It's getting good. Hey, you know, he he, based, he gives the signs of the truthfulness of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, that he was the best of all prophets and that if you follow him, perfectly you will be blessed you will be blessed with divine converse you will be uh receive a lot of help from Allah as long as you uh purify yourself you attain a taqwa which is righteousness and a fear of Allah you know you could you could literally change the world around you and that's and that's what I hope and that's what I hope that this stream does my friends that you know that that gives that gives us a sense of hope that you know this this whole world is drowning right now. And we are in the ark of Noah, the Noah of this age, who is the Pontius Silas. We have to board the ark, my friends. And we have to stay in that ark. We cannot let ourselves go astray. Because if we do, then we drown. And this and much of this world is drowning in their in their misery because they they haven't uh, accepted the Imam Mahdi and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yet. Some of them are outright reject the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and now they are being the consequences for what they do. But nonetheless, uh, you know, we 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 live in a very fortunate time where the propagation of Islam is totally you know with our fingertips uh the process of islam mentions in uh and butter Amadiyya, part four and part five that uh we have the means to convey the message around the world a lot faster now because of more efficient means this points to the fact that you know there should be a messiah and that messiah this means of Allah Mahmoud, a place in India. 
for those for those who don't know who he is, uh, he was uh, a reformer, a, re a religious reformer that came that was appointed in uh, the year 1883 by Allah Taala. That uh, that he would reform the Muslims and the world around him because because the world has gone astray. The Muslims have went astray from Islam, and also this time calls for the advent of the promised Messiah, as uh, Hadrat Jesus al Islam prophesied in Matthew 24 and uh, the Holy Quran, chapters, chapter 61, verse uh, 7, I believe. And uh, this, this, time really, this time really calls for it. I know everybody everybody is saying almost everybody is saying we are living in the latter days nations are warring against each other we already had two world wars we have famines we got wildfires happening in california on the west coast climate change coronavirus political chaos donald trump and the and the political chaos in pakistan and and the middle east being a, a big mess uh, you know, I'm I'm telling you guys, we need to accept the promise of Sayyid because if we don't, we're gonna drown. We need we need to purify ourselves. We need we need to get our we need to pray. Because only prayer is that cure. Sahih Bihari Hadith says that praying five times a day is like taking a bath five times a day. As a matter of fact, the Prophet Sayyid has a book on prayer. In response to uh sirs Sayyid Ahmed Khan, who made big mistakes on in his book on uh, predestination and acceptance of prayer, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now offered him a good rebuttal and told him that cause and effect is part of the law of nature as appointed by Allah. This is a book that I highly recommend to everybody whenever they get the chance to read this for your own benefit, even you, brother. So. I'll get to it. Inshallah, inshallah. One, one, you know, one at a time. Inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. Or unless if you can do many, then I mean, just inshallah. try to put. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, we are we are very blessed, and uh, you know, I plan on. I think you know that's basically all I had to say. You know, about both of our experiences of the books of the Prophet Society. I already, I already tell people my experiences uh, with the books of the Prophet Society. Play Islam all the time, but now my brothers, especially to to four and You know, now we have two converts on here uh, preaching, preaching the true Islam. You know, we gotta, we gotta preach. We gotta, we gotta get this message across. Uh, and I encourage you guys, you know, just start preaching more, like do podcasts like this. Like, it, you know, you will, get, you will get blessings, blessings. And, you know, we could literally, uh, you know, change the world. Inshallah. And so, Nizakula, brother, for taking your time to come on here and, uh, and uh, sharing, sharing a little bit of your story. And then, Inshallah, uh, We'll do a little bit more podcasts on, on more of what we've read from the books of the Prophet Society in the future, as well as both of our experiences. And I also plan on doing a little bit more podcasts with other other convert brothers and even more more Namaji brothers, and then those thinking about joining Jamaat because we gotta preach, we gotta preach the truth, we gotta get that message across because we got we got souls to save. Inshallah, yes, we do, yes, we do. even though. Only Allah saves, Allah rewards those who who submit themselves to him and and submit themselves to his will of mercy. Inshallah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin. Kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Inna Muhammadu Mujid. Allahumma barak Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin. Kama berikta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa ala 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 